A comet has erupted near the blazing edge of the sun, its light flaring in a single night, its tail stretching wider than a handful of full moons. Only days afterward, the sun itself hurled forth its strongest eruption in months, a solar flare so intense it launched a giant shockwave into the very sector of space where Comet r 2 swan now races toward Earth. Astronomers and sky watchers alike circle one date on the calendar, October 21st, 2025, when Swan will swing closest to our planet at the same time that another interstellar visitor reaches an eerie alignment on the far side of the sun. No one can say what will happen when solar storms collide. With a comet's vast, fragile tail, will the heavens ignite with drama or remain strangely still? The chain of events has already begun. The question is what happens when Starfire meets a cosmic traveler? September 12th, 2025. The comet, cataloged as C2025R2, but widely shortened to SWAN, rounds its closest approach to the Sun. Its distance is half an astronomical unit, closer than the orbit of Mars. At that moment, its activity seems modest. The brightness hovers at magnitude 7.4, requiring binoculars or telescopes to see. The tail stretches only a couple of degrees across the darkness. It looks like a routine traveler, but comets are built for surprise. Just two weeks later, the change is undeniable. September 26th. Reports from Japan and Australia reveal a sudden surge in brightness. Observers notice it with astonishment. The glow leaps almost a full magnitude overnight, enough to bring Swan into naked eye range under dark skies. Within hours, international networks are abuzz. Online photometry confirms magnitude 5.7, stabilizing near 5.8 through September 28th. This is no minor fluctuation. Such jumps hint at upheaval deep inside the nucleus, a frozen relic fractured by centuries of exposure. Now hammered by intense solar heating, as Swan swings outward from perihelion, its crust can no longer contain the pressure. Pockets of volatile ice rupture, releasing jets of gas that drag dust into the void. The coma swells, the tail fattens, and the comet grows into something far more spectacular than the faint blur it once was. Every deviation in its light curve becomes a clue. Stresses, vents, and sudden collapses are all under debate. Some report narrow jets sprouting near the nucleus, possible evidence of fresh vents opening to the vacuum. The comet has broken from the script. Professionals and amateurs alike are transfixed. For now, the evidence is clear. Swan has entered a volatile new phase and its behavior is unpredictable. The question becomes larger than brightness. What will this unleashed energy do to the comet's structure? How far will the enormous tail grow? Already it stretches more than two and a half degrees across the heavens, equal to five full moons side by side. To those who track the sky, this scale changes everything. Swan is no longer just a fuzzy dot lost among countless stars. It is a living structure that demands attention, a sweep across the firmament that can be traced even from suburban backyards. The wider the tail grows, the more secrets it reveals. Dust knots, subtle rays, and the pale electric blue streak of the ion tail all come into view. The dust, heavy and slow, remains near the comet's orbital path, forming a golden fan. The ions, light and swift, dance under the pressure of the solar wind, able to ripple, bend, or even disconnect entirely when conditions align. Even small instruments can detect these changes. A night's observation may reveal twists, fading plumes, or sudden surges as new material streams from the nucleus. Photographers capture the nightly differences, stacking frames to produce time-lapse views where the tail writhes visibly in hours. Reports pour in of shifting colors, dusty gold blending with icy blue, testimony to the comet's complex chemistry. Geography shapes the opportunity. In September and early October, the comet favors southern latitudes, Observers in Argentina, South Africa, and Australia enjoy swan high in their skies, but northern watchers are not excluded. As the month advances and the moon wanes, the comet climbs higher, offering glimpses to Europe and North America as well. For anyone with binoculars, these weeks are a front row seat to a live experiment in solar system dynamics. And then, just as the excitement peaks, the sun itself roars. September 28, 0843 UTC. Solar monitors spike abruptly. After weeks of calm, the sun unleashes its strongest flare in months, an M6.4 class event. For most of September, X-ray flux had been flat, lulling forecasters into complacency. Now satellite detectors, GOES-16, GOES-18, 
blaze with sudden data. Within minutes, instruments aboard the Solar Dynamics Observatory and SOHO confirm the eruption. Coronagraphs reveal the swelling arc of a coronal mass ejection, CME. Its speed, between 800 and 1,000 kilometers per second, places it among the year's most forceful blasts. The CME is not Earth-directed, but its aim is uncanny. The plasma front sweeps into the same quadrant of the solar system where Comet Swan now streaks. Within operation centers, alarms ripple. Spacecraft operators check their shielding protocols, but scientists focus elsewhere, the Comet Corridor. Only two days after Swan's sudden outburst, a solar eruption now barrels toward its expanding ion tail. The CME expands like a wave through interplanetary space, carrying tangled magnetic fields. Swan's coordinates place it just inside Earth's orbit, slightly below the ecliptic plane. Models overlay the CME's trajectory with the comet's path. The possibility of an intersection is flagged worldwide. Without direct spacecraft in that region, forecasts remain uncertain. Still, the potential is enough to trigger global campaigns of observation. The chance of CME tail interaction is rare, and SWAN provides a bright, well-placed target. Why does it matter? Because cometary ion tails are fragile filaments tied to magnetic lines of the solar wind. When a CME arrives with a field aligned southward, the conditions trigger magnetic reconnection, a sudden rearrangement of field lines, like cosmic wires snapping and rejoining. Entire sections of a comet's tail can detach in minutes drifting off as glowing fragments while a new tail begins to grow behind. Such tail disconnections have been seen before, but almost always with faint comets and limited instruments. This time the world can watch in near real time. Swan's tail, two and a half degrees long and bright enough for small telescopes, is fully exposed. If reconnection occurs, the spectacle could unfold in under two hours, visible to anyone with a clear sky. The uncertainty heightens the drama. Not every dimming or ripple will be caused by the CME. Geometry is everything, and the exact alignment is unknown. Scientists warn against jumping to conclusions. The correct response is vigilance. Document, compare, report. Build the record. Every observer with a camera, every telescope image, becomes a piece of evidence in a planetary scale experiment. For now, the only certainty is change. As October advances, SWAN continues to brighten and climb. Each night brings new reports of tail motion, subtle knots of dust, or shifting blue streamers. Global collaboration grows. Amateurs coordinate across continents, logging rise times, sharing overlays, refining orbital plots. Professionals deploy spectrographs, measuring shifts in hydrogen and oxygen lines as plasma interacts with the solar wind. The comet has become a stage where cosmic forces play out in full view of Earth, and then comes the moment. October 21st, 2025. Swan sweeps within 0.25 astronomical units of Earth, 39 million kilometers, roughly 100 lunar distances. For a comet, this is close, remarkably close. The timing could not be better. A new moon ensures the darkest skies of the month, clearing the heavens of glare. On the very same date, an interstellar visitor makes its own passage. Object 3I Atlas, born beyond the solar system, reaches superior conjunction, aligned opposite the Sun from Earth's perspective. Two travelers, one native, one alien, converging on the ecliptic plane in near-perfect alignment. Statistically, the odds are vanishingly small, yet the universe has staged the coincidence. For sky watchers, the experience is immediate. From Buenos Aires to Perth, the comet rises early, tail sweeping low across the horizon. In northern latitudes, Swan climbs after midnight, gaining altitude each passing night. Star charts place it near Piscis Austrinus, traceable by drawing a line from bright Fomalhaut. Its tail, two and a half degrees long, is easy to measure against the spacing of neighboring stars. Binoculars frame the whole structure in one view. Small telescopes reveal detail, streamers, kinks, jet-like plumes near the head, even a simple camera on a tripod. A few seconds of exposure captures the streak against the constellations. With the comet so near, parallax becomes measurable, a subtle shift in position depending on the observer's location. Coordinated teams record these changes, comparing notes across continents. Each sketch, each photo, adds a pixel to the global portrait. The setup is extraordinary, a bright comet at its closest in years, a solar eruption rushing into its path an interstellar wanderer aligned in the background, a new moon ensuring dark skies. The stage is set for a documented encounter unlike any in recent memory. What will unfold? 
perhaps nothing more than subtle ripples in the tail. Or perhaps a dramatic severing, a plume of ions breaking free, a shift in spectral lines by tens of kilometers per second. Whatever happens, the record will stand. A unique chance for both professionals and amateurs to witness cosmic processes directly. SWAN is no longer just a comet. It is a reminder of unpredictability, that in the solar system, surprise is always waiting and the sky itself can tour. SWAN is no longer just a comet. It is a reminder of unpredictability, that in the solar system, surprise is always waiting and the sky itself can turn into a laboratory without warning. On October 21, 2025, the world will look upward together.